What are you getting done? So I'm hoping to get a textured crop top. I have a picture. Okay. I, I know my hair is really straight. Yeah. So, so I've always wanted to do something like this. But I don't think my hair could do it, you know, if it's a lineup. So fit. Pretty much, pretty much. So you want to texture it on top. Yeah. Your hair sticks up in the front. Right, right. Because you got a cowlick there. Yeah. So it's not going to lay down like this. I mean, we could by cutting it down. Right. We could layer it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm down for whatever you think. You want to layer it? I, I'm an open canvas, so I, I got a haircut about two weeks ago. Yeah. I, I think I feel like I took too much bulk, so I like like lower fade, you know? Yeah. Uh, okay. keep, it, keep it dark, you know? The, the thing, too, with the way your hair is colored yeah. is uh, it would have looked nicer if the color dropped down a little bit more right. with the drop fade, but it's just, I mean, okay. once we cut it and stuff, if you color it later. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's up to you. Uh, I'm down for anything. All right, cool. Thank you. Yeah, no doubt. All right, so I didn't have my lavalier mic on at this point in time. My boy Dre was coming to drop it off because I had forgot it at the 245 warehouse. But just to explain what I'm doing here, we are doing a profile section right through the middle on the top. Notice that I kind of separated all the rest of the hair away, combing it towards the side of his head. And then we're gonna go ahead and cut the shape and the length that we want with that profile section strip right through the middle, that strip of hair right through the middle. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take sections on both sides of that, that profile strip and we're gonna kind of over direct it towards, just slightly over direct it towards the previous section that we cut which is that strip that we started off in the beginning. And then every section after that, we just slightly over direct towards the previous cut. And that's pretty much our guide to cut the top, the same shape, the same length. And then what I'll do towards the fringe area is we cut it shorter. We cut it shorter because we want it to be layered. We want it to not stick straight out how it was previously, like when he first um, first sat down because in the picture he wanted more of a cropped look as opposed to like a spiky look like he kind of came in with like a spiky look the only thing is that with his texture of hair the characteristics of his hair like the front of his hairline it just sprouts straight up so it's going to be difficult to get it to lay down the way it looks like in the picture that he showed me and then with the fade he also talked about keeping it actually lower and keeping the c cup so the fade on the sides is going to look different than the the picture that he showed me but it's still technically the same style haircut that textured cropish vibe that's the goal that we're going for here and then we'll just make sure that everything's even we didn't put any texture into his hair by like point cut or anything like that just because his hair already has like that coarse spiky textured look all right guys what we're using here is a number three so for a little bit of this video you're gonna hear me talking straight to the phone i have my lavalier on the way and then you'll be able to you'll be able to hear me uh you still want to keep this uh, slash the side? The oh, side? Uh, yeah, whatever you can do. Okay. Bab the babeless trimmers. Yeah, I I switch it up, bro. Like I don't I don't really stick to just one clipper. Oh, okay. No. I got a uh, JRL. Oh, the the clippers or the trimmers? Uh, the dual set. Oh, yeah. you got the set. Yep. And then I got a uh, Andis Master cordless. What shade did you get? A babeless one, the red one. That's the best one. Yeah, it is actually. I actually got mine smashed by a barber. Smashed? Like, yeah. So that's what I was saying. I was like, I had my up and down. Uh -huh. He was like, hey, like, because I've got all the guys shirts, you know, and I got him the, the different size. He got, he got messed Yeah, it led to him smashing your shaver. Yeah. All right, guys, Lavalier is on now. Well, when we used to go to Seattle, I would do, um, I'd go to Portland. So I just traveled around, you know. Yeah. And I just like Seattle just because of the views and you can do so much i got so we're gonna refresh this but i think i'm gonna leave that for last because i want that fade to be kind of like a drop when did those drop those are brand new right i don't think these drop to the public just yet oh those are like i don't even know bro i, would, I don't usually i just tell people go to dermatologist i actually went to uh it's called las vegas yeah yeah i went to that one Then we'll go ahead and start the fade process. Start off with the blade open and it's going to start moving through. Try to go through this quickly because what I'm excited at is um, detailing, right? So he's got a strong occipital bone, right? So, you know, that's going to be a little bit of a challenge, but he wants it to be a little bit lower back here. So, the problem is that. 
Uh, I'm gonna go one and a half guard, guys. One and a half guard for the next one. I'm gonna go through it. Remember, we started off with a number three, guys. So we're gonna start fading down now. So I'm gonna go two open. This should blend right into the work we did with that number three. Notice I'm going down here to keep that dark. That so when we line it up. Okay, now we'll close that number two. We're cutting a little bit lower than what we just left off with that two open. Okay, and the reason why I left the, the line for a little bit is I want to see if I could uh, get it low enough to where maybe I can bring the line a little bit lower since he wants that drop fade. Kind of curve it down a little bit more to give that more of a drop fade effect. All right, so two open, two close. Right beneath where we left off. So it doesn't really matter so much how high you go up as long as you're going straight up, right? All right underneath that two open, we're going to close. All right, my next step is gonna be my one and a half guard. Remember, we created this section with the one and a half guard closed. So we're gonna go one and a half guard open to blend down from that two guard closed. Work this through all the way around. So guys, uh, one and a half guard. Remember this whole, this panel is a one and a half guard. So we're gonna go one guard closed. We shouldn't be leaving a line. We should just be blending right into this area where that one and a half guard close was used, right? So we're focusing on like a section on right beneath where we left off, trying not to create another line. Then right underneath that, you go closed, and you can see it's just lightening it little by little, lightening it little by little as we go down. The lower we go, the more of a gradient it's starting to create. So we're back here now. Remember, we're gonna try to keep this lower. Actually, when I'm working up to uh, the guy, he wants to he wants to do like a media report. That's so dope, man. I wish more shop owners were like that, man. I right, guys, so this is the one guard close now. We, if you notice, we just did the one guard open. And this video is cut up. Um, I'll put the full length video on the academy for those of you who are academy members. Check that out on the academy if you're interested. And hopefully, I can get a few All right, guys. So what I'm trying to do is refrain from detailing as much as possible, which I kind of did there. So next step is going to be my half guard. I'm going to start all the way open, and then we'll close it little by little. And what I'm focused on is this little subtle line that's in there. So I'm going up just enough to where I don't create a, a, a line. You can kind of sense um, with some experience how high you can get away with without creating a line. But if you do, it's not a big deal. You just take it out with that one guard, right? That next guard up. But you'll save yourself time by not creating another line. When your eyes are, a lot of times will play tricks on you from being in the same spot too long. So that's why I like to just go through the system, come back later. Right, guys and you got to make sure that you're dropping it right so we're not going straight across like that you ruined the cut we're dropping it that's why this line this little subtle line that's there is so important it keeps you on track so sure you lose some time creating that line but where you lose time you actually gain some because it keeps you organized especially for beginners guys and we're almost done with this phase we're closing up this last step now i'm halfway open and on the on his left side that i just did i didn't even have to go all the way closed and it kind of and it faded that line out that's dope like you don't have to go all the way closed and, and use that time same steps on one side might not work for all, all your sides. All right guys, so this is kind of detailing what I'm doing right here, but I want to knock it out before I moved on because if I don't do this part right here, when I start taking out that bottom line, I'm not really sure how gradient it really looks if this darker area isn't kind of clean. All right, so we're done there. We can go ahead and start to blend out this bottom line. Now you could go blade open and continue to fade down, right? You could go and then close it up some, and then close it up some until you get to the bottom and you're all the way closed and then it's fade it out right or you could go clipper all the way close and just go up a little bit open it up some up a little bit open it up some up a little bit until it's faded out the higher you go with the blade all the way open the more corner you use because it's uh less commitment probably less likely to, to put a line in right and then we'll close it a little bit more and then before we just left off All right guys, so what I'm doing here with the half guard is where I left off with the blade all the way open, I'm just kind of spreading that area out a little bit just to give it a little bit more of a transition. And so this is just safer than going up a little bit higher with the blade open, right? We haven't used the half guard yet, but we also haven't faded the bottom down. So we'll focus on that right now. If you're not quite sure, you can do in like panels. For whatever reason, you have a subtle line 
at the bottom there. Just keep going, just move on. You can take that out later with a with a trimmer. Have you guys got uh, any barber bottles out here? In Tampa, we don't really ha be having any, man. Every now and then, but not like it used to. Tennessee Barber Expo is a good one. Salt Lake City, yeah, we usually travel out. And a lot of the guys from Tampa actually go to a lot of the shows. A lot of the most innovative barbers, the barbers who've made some of the most impact in the industry from out here. Mm. All right, guys, now we're closing it up after we've done the blade all the way open. Now we're about a quarter of the way closed. Again, using a lot of corners, really trying to knock out that subtle bottom line. And you can't be too scared to go up, go up in these areas because if you don't go up, you're not going to get enough of light to dark. I'll spread it out a little bit more, but I'm not going to spend too much time on it because once I line it up, then uh, I'll be able to see it better. So that'll actually save me some time using the FX3s. These things are sharp. Please let me know if it's too sharp. Let's go ahead and create this line. And what I kind of want to do is make sure that this line contours with this baseline. Hope that makes sense. And then with this texture here, you kind of got to look down at it because there sometimes his hair is going to stick out and overlap that line. And so you want to kind of carve that hair out of the way. Brush it down and just kind of make sure you're going from the top down. It carves out the way you get a much cleaner, sharper line. And I think I'm going to go ahead and use the razor now. 245 triple cartridge razor. This hair is thick and coarse. So you need a little bit more, more preparation, I feel like. So in order to get more space, you kind of pull at the scalp and just very slightly just using corners right to have more control now as we're getting here we're making the, the line thinner little by little we got less to less room to kind of play with here right okay, so now that we have that bottom line now we can really detail that top line a little bit better I'm just using the corner of the blade And once I do that, guys, what I like to do is put a little bit more shave gel, I should say, because of the aloe vera, so it doesn't get red and irritated. You know, with his hair texture, you definitely got to pay attention to hair that's overlapping the line. And carve. And take away his uh, little feet here. He's got a hairline that you have to be cause a bit cosmetic with. At the middle point here, the peak, we just did the vertical bar. And now we're gonna use this corner and just walk it over to the what we did here in the middle. And with this comb, we're going straight up and we're just cutting what's coming off the spine of the comb, right? So just cutting what's coming off the spine of the comb. All right, all my enhancement haters, you can log off now. I'm gonna color this part right here, just so you guys can see what it would look like if it was all dark. Um, obviously, that's not real color, but obviously this is not a bad fade. This is just color right here, right? Flight would say I'm covering it up, but Flight, I'm not covering anything up. I'm gonna attempt to darken this up a bit. Yeah, but like I, I kept doing one time for like five days, so this is what I want it to look like, guys. With the colors like that and then this color runs all the way through here and contours the head that's how you want it to look I was, I was excited for that. when they come here okay. that's what I the clients, like, Don't do this again. so I'll follow that up with like a, a razor with alcohol on it just to get some of the overspray out you guys can see that starting you can see like a layer of color coming off sometimes you can't really even see the overspray until you follow it up with the razor. So yeah, I can see it doesn't look bad. It just looks like roots. My hair used to be thicker. And kind of lost it. And then what I like to do when it's like that is go ahead and take your comb and that way it kind of blends in nicer. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it like like uh, like you, man. So Manny, he's a retired YouTuber. I learned this from him. We're trying, to, we're trying to get him out of retirement, though. Literally one of the most underrated barbers I know, for sure. 
Alright guys, so look at this. See that hair that's kind of overlapping there? I want to come at it from this angle and take that hair off. Boom. The reason why I do this is because it, it just gives it a different cut. It automatically makes it feel like I'm seeing things differently. Who's that off? What? Oh yeah. yeah. Appreciate it, bro. Looks like I just came out of like the Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimately, you're just kind of spreading the fade out little by little, making it more grating. All right, so I wanted to verify that he was shaving that off his face. So we're, we're gonna shave. Some people want that lined up. Some people want a, a goat, uh, like a beard. I did that one. It's it's very common. That's why I ask. I did it for fun, not just. Oh yeah. yeah. You use 245 powder. You get at 245.com. Go ahead, George, you spin it one time, put it before. Let me show you guys the after. 